I am on a platform 21 meters above the water. And today, a bunch of amazing athletes are going to dive off of here into the ocean below. And then after that, I am going to dive off of some much smaller cliffs behind me. How in the world can we use science to keep us safe while doing this? So Red Bull invited me to Polignano Amare, Italy for the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series to find out. The men's diving platform is 27 meters in the air and the women's is 21 meters up in the air. By the time they reach the water, these divers can be traveling at speeds up to 85 kilometers per hour. The divers are scored on three main aspects of their dive, their takeoff, their position in the air, and their entry into the water. And it's that last one that I wanna talk about today. Though they start from different positions, including front flips and back flips and handstands, the divers all end up in the same position when they enter the water. Vertical, with their muscles tense and their feet down. But why? Let's start by talking about deceleration. When the athletes reach the water, they're going to slow down and stop moving. And deceleration is a measure of the rate at which they slow down. We can look at a simplified formula for acceleration or deceleration as the change in velocity over the change in time. The velocities the divers are going at when they reach the water is pretty much unchanged between dives. They're probably going around 85 kilometers per hour and then they stop. A belly flop results in a sudden stop and a short change in time, while a sleek vertical entry position into the water increases the amount of time it takes the diver to slow down due to drag and buoyancy, thereby decreasing the rate of deceleration. And because force equals mass times acceleration, or in this case, deceleration, the smaller the deceleration, the smaller the force that the diver will experience will be. It's actually the same way that an airbag in a car crash works. The airbag increases the amount of time it takes for your body to go from moving to stopped, thereby decreasing the rate of deceleration and helping to keep you safe. The vertical entry also changes how the diver's body displaces water as they enter. A belly flop presents a much larger surface area than a foot first entry. The larger surface area gives the water a greater area upon which to resist the diver's entrance to the water. This increases the force on the diver's body. A smaller surface area allows them to cut through the water rather than smacking against it. And this is really important. Even diving correctly, divers can be exposed to multiple G-forces upon impact. And if they dive incorrectly, that can increase to 20 to 30 Gs, which can do serious damage to body tissue. Now, there are a lot of other cool aspects of physics that I'm not covering here, including the angular momentum of the divers and the surface tension of the water, but I put links to discussions of those in the description down below. So when you land, you land feet first, and the goal is to kind of just be in a totally straight line. You want your shoulders, your hips, and your knees, and your feet all in a line to get through that water. When you do it right, it feels amazing. You go straight down super deep, and you know that you've just done a great dive. When you land a little short, it feels like an uppercut from Mike Tyson. It sometimes hurts. I tell you, most of the time it hurts the feet. Okay. But when you did a dive and only the feet hurt, it, it's perfect, you know? Because if you are less vertical, like, like this, it's going to hurt like a lot of different places. Or if you are like on the butt a little, it's going to hurt too. But when you're right vertical, you kind of dig that hole with your feet. Then you fall into that hole. It feels really good. We're hitting the water at anywhere between 70 to 80 kilometers an hour, you know, and we're slowing down in a couple of seconds. So uh, it's really hard to describe. Sometimes it feels like you're in a washing machine. You know, you go through and you, your arms and legs, they, they go everywhere. But when you do a nice entry, it's, it's such a nice feeling. You know, you can hear the sound of your feet hitting the water and then all of a sudden it's silent. Um, so you have the wind and then you hit the water and everything goes silent, you go, wow. Now watching these divers actually reminded me a lot of diving birds. These are gannets, birds that adopt a very similar, sleek, near vertical body shape to cut through the water and hunt for fish. These birds can dive from heights even up to about 30 meters. And these birds do some pretty interesting things to keep themselves safe while they're diving too. Because they're going into the water head first, they could seriously injure their necks upon impact if they're not careful. I found a really cool study from 2016 that looked at all of the different forces that these birds endure as they're diving into the water and how they keep themselves safe. 
It found that the birds contract their neck muscles before impact, causing their tendons to add stabilizing tension to the bones of their naturally S-shaped neck, helping to straighten it out and fix it in place to prevent buckling and injury upon impact. And this muscle tension sounded pretty familiar. But it's not only about being vertical, it's really about being strong at this precise moment. If you are vertical but soft, you're gonna hurt yourself. So it's really to get tense right there. When we enter into the water like this, we are protected. Like our body armor, or build the armor <laughs> to protect everything in our body. For me, I'm always making sure that I'm squeezing tight my, my glutes, my bottom and, and my stomach. And then for my upper body, I always try and grab my hands and kind of push them through the water and it naturally tightens your upper body as well. My biggest tip for entering the water for people who haven't jumped is a lot of people when they hit the water they kind of want to cringe like they're like waiting for the water and they get smaller. Think about elongating okay. because that's going to make you squeeze your muscles tighter so then the water is not going to feel as hard because if you're braced and you're tight then it's going to feel a lot easier than if you're loose and then you smack. And be confident and have fun. Like, okay. This is amazing, you're gonna do this and just appreciate. My biggest uh, word of advice would be to enjoy it. Okay. You know, it's gonna be scary, but uh, just enjoy it and enjoy where you are. So now it was time for my own dive and I decided to dive from just about four meters. It's a little shorter than the 21 or 27 meters that these professional amazing athletes are doing, but it was still pretty scary. Now, I wouldn't say that my entry position was perfect on the first time. I did try an elongate, uh, but I might have started a little too early and I sat down into that dive a little bit. But with practice, I got a little better on the second one. And I think the next time I'm in Italy diving off of cliffs, I'm going to be just perfect. Go forth and do some crazy, awesome science things.